well, we're here with crypto land, but I'm starting with this Durham nonsense. This Durham investigation has been going on for years. Um, and the idea is, I remember hearing this on uh, the left wing news, supposedly Trump servers made some connection to some Russian bank servers. And it sounded really, really lame and bogus, like maybe a DNS lookup or something. And the, uh, the left people tried to say this proved that Trump was conspiring with the Russians when it really didn't sound like it proved much of anything. And then the lawyer that claimed this uh, apparently concealed the fact that he was working for the Clinton campaign. So now Trump and his gang are trying to say it's all um, them trying to Clinton trying to frame him for something. And now they're claiming that somebody had access to the network traffic in the White House and they looked at Trump's campaign's DNS lookups while he was in office. And this constitutes spying on him. And Trump says people should be executed for this. This is treason and everything else. And so anyway, it's going on. It does seem to involve the tiniest bit of uh, cyber information. <laughs> but nothing significant was found in the spying. It does, spying doesn't really look very extreme. It just seems to be both sides trying to build a mountain out of a molehill. But it drags on and on. And, and the funny thing is, I think this is going to hurt the Republicans more than anything, because most of the establishment Republicans are saying, you know, nobody cares about Hillary Clinton. Nobody cares about the 2016 election. People don't really care about the 2020 election. Why don't you just lay off and Trump will just not lay off? It's all about relitigating stuff that supposedly happened five or six years ago. Anyway, the Durham investigation charges ahead. <laughs> What is the object of this exercise? Well, it was to prove that Hillary Clinton spied on him and therefore she should be punished and therefore Trump has something to be aggrieved about. But like you said, at this point, who cares? So I know he won the 2016 the election. That's why most people figured, well, you'll stop complaining about it. But no, that is not Trump's thing. His thing is to complain forever about how he was abused. I mean, ago. clearly she's not going to run again. So I know. And Anyway, it, it just drags on and on. And now with him taking the 15 boxes, including classified documents to Mar-a-Lago, it kind of shows that him whining about her emails is probably not really uh, a significant difference between the two of them. Anyway, but this is the, what a lot of the Republicans are saying. You know, you've got to stop whining about stuff that's over, that no one cares about, and like talk about something in the future. But he never had anything in the future. I remember when he was running in 2020, they kind of Fox News and they threw him a softball. So what is your plan to improve America? And he's like, Hillary Clinton ripped me off four years ago. He didn't have any plan for the future at all, ever. And they say, why don't you talk about building another wall or something? That's how you won, but they can't get him to focus on the future. However, it looks like the Democrats are going to lose even if the Republicans have got nothing. So it's... You'd like to think our election system would be the best people battling to the finish, but it's sort of like the worst losers and which one is losing more. Anyway, so you've got uh, somebody who chose a bug bounty instead of stealing all the money in the world. Yes, I thought this was an interesting story. Um, it was uh, about this guy who figured out how to... Um, how to uh, attack... Uh, uh, an Ethereum uh, network and uh, managed to essentially figure out how he could uh, uh, print unlimited uh, Ethereum on this network. But then he, instead of just making himself infinite money, uh, uh, humbly chose the $2 million bug bounty um, instead. And I thought this was interesting for a number of reasons, um, not least of which uh, it had a $2 million bug bounty, which you don't hear about every day. Usually um, bug bounties are pretty small, uh, fairly insignificant amounts of money. Um, this was a pretty big payout. Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. I didn't uh, get through the full uh, technical breakdown on it yet, but um, he published the, the guy who goes by uh, Sarek as his hacker handle, uh, Jay Freeman as his government name, published a breakdown on his blog at uh, Sarek.com. Um, That's the guy that made the, uh, the iPhone. Cydia. Cydia. Yeah. 
wow, he's really yeah. important. I didn't know he was in crypto. And yeah. this is and this is a layer two attack. This is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah, well, that's the layer two ecosystem to go cross chain seems to really be fragile. A whole lot of hacks there. Yeah, it, well, and it it attacks like there was another attack that um, focused on on this uh, attacks uh, the bridge um, between uh, uh, which which really, uh, as as I understand it, it um, uh, it, it is uh, the um, protocols and the contracts that they use to um, interface between different uh, crypto networks. Yeah, yeah. Which seems like a good, which seems like in a good attack vector. It is a lot of a lot of big attacks there. Layer two is great. I, I covered it a lot in my crypto class, but um, it is there are all kinds of cool cryptography to make layer two actually secure. But uh, there's ways to make mistakes. Anyway, and then Caitlin has got the glorious crypto land, and you can share your screen if you want, if you want to actually I play do. the- I, Yes, I do. And this is going to be very interesting because in order to do this properly, I would have to um, set up like OBS Studio and like mix audio. So we're just going to do it the cheap way and I'll just turn up the volume so you can hear in the background. So let's see, uh, share screen. Um, I want to share just the window. Aha, here we go, share. Okay, excellent. So there I'll turn up the volume. So this has been fascinating me for like an entire week. This is a, a video from a project called Cryptoland. And there's a lot of talk about the metaverse and like making this virtual land and people are buying virtual property. These people want to create a sort of Disneyland for crypto enthusiasts. And it is amazingly terrible. So let's, let's begin watching this together. <laughs> um, and by the way, all, the, all my news stories and everything today is just going to be like 20 minutes of me talking about crypto land. So let's begin. Christopher, a crypto degen with a crush for crypto kitties. All right, can you hear that? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I didn't know what a degen was. Uh, a degen is short for degenerates. <laughs> so we're, we're off to a good start right now. So let, let's continue. So this guy's on a, a helicopter. It's going to crypto land, right? I'm on my way to crypto land, the number one crypto destination on earth where crypto enthusiasts, so crypto landers, like we're called here, can meet with like-minded individuals in real life. And when Connie, the founder, told me that visionary investors could own a piece of this unique island, I smashed bought one of the 60 exclusive parcels on the blockchain hills. That's how I became a king crypto lander. And there it is. Okay, so before we, we go on, what in order to raise funding, they're selling parcels of property on an island that they don't own yet. And we'll, we'll, we'll go into a story about that soon, but just, just to know how shady this is, they're selling, you know, the old story about selling someone a bridge, you know, the Brooklyn bridge. That's essentially what they're doing here. They're saying, yeah, you can buy this, this property on our island. We don't own it yet, you know, but you know, have fun. Um, And then there's an allusion to Jurassic Park. We all know how that goes. <laughs> and now, Vladimir Club Party tonight. Yeah, just for crypto. Now watch this. This is amazing. Have a nice day, sir. Thank you, <laughs> Connie. Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> they named the mascot of the entire land Connie. Connie, as I... in like they are like con art. <laughs> oh. Like they have no shame. <laughs> Anyway, this, this Connie mascot is sort of like the genie from Aladdin, and he's going to go around and, and show Christopher, uh, which I, I'm sure is named because it sounds like Cryptofer, uh, around the island. So let's skip ahead a little bit. Um, so they get off, they got the boat, um, and then, okay, here we go. So I met my first class crypto lifestyle, man. Yeah. Hey, first man, class crypto car, lifestyle. Right? Yes, sir. Everybody is here. <laughs> Carolyn, here he is. Hi. Hi, Mr. Adams. Nice to see you, sir. Did you have a good flight? Oh, yes. Excellent. Thanks for asking. Great. Here are your keys. Not your keys. Not your Bitcoins. Seriously? Your keys. Your Bitcoin. Not your keys. Not your Bitcoin. <laughs> Where do you come up with these crazy ideas? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you where. <laughs> So the, the entire appeal of this like amusement park, exhort, exhort, you know, whatever you want to call it, 
is that they're they're just ripping off memes they see on the internet and like turning it into a real place. Like that's their entire humor. That's everything. Like it's just what if we took memes and like turned it into an island? <laughs> and it's but it's not just like universal memes like cats or whatever. It's these these really weird you know crypto memes memes you wouldn't get unless you were like really into crypto. Um, so anyway, they uh, there's this really weird uh, yeah. car so ride. The Lambo is ready. Yeah, they're gonna ride in a Lambo, of course. To the moon, to the moon, to the moon not the moon. Entering the blockchain hill. Hey, okay. What's that? The Vladimir Club, crypto renders members only club. We are preparing everything for tonight. We are throwing the most epic crypto party ever. I wonder who your plus one is going to be. <laughs> so that's that's for people that own like more than like one percent or something of like all the bitcoins or something on a specific blockchain. Like Vladimir Putin, I assume. I mean, yep. We are King Crypto Lenders territory. So these and are the parcels they're quote unquote selling. Parcels. I can't wait to get to mine. I like the QR wow. code on the wall. <laughs> I got the parcel to build something dope for vacation. Okay, they're, they're actually hanging NFTs on the walls. Like, <laughs> like I, I never, uh, this is just terrible. Now that I'm here, I might never leave. I Although I do, I do admit, I do like the modern line. design. Show me more. Okay. First stop of the tour. This was on the top of the list. A much requested working zone. Because Right, so the first thing they show off is a cybersecurity nightmare. Uh, basically, they want everyone to come to this island and start working in uh, this open building where everyone can see everyone's screen, where they connect to a common internet, where people from all, all over the world come and connect their computers into their network, which we'll get into the infrastructure and stuff. You soon. act like there's some problem with this. Yeah, there's a few problems. Uh, so anyway, they, uh, they go in here and they uh, see everyone working and it's just an open area for people to work. News coming tomorrow. You can feel the entrepreneurial spirit here. You can work, get coffee, and when you get stressed, you can hit up the de stress room. Oh, yeah. So the de stress room is amazing. Like, you remember DuckTales, right? These people so love their money. They decided that, like, DuckTales would be like a perfect inspiration for their crypto land. De stress room? Yeah, the de stress room. A pool full of coins? That's insane. Don't be shy. Go ahead and try. Everybody loves it. Uh, <laughs> if you like this, just wait until you see what's next. I love that they're physical crypto coins. Yeah, they, the physical crypto coins are their big thing. You know, I remember back when I was in Catholic school, we were taught, you know, the story of the, the people that would worship the golden cow. Uh, and I thought... <laughs> do this who would who would like love money and stuff so much that they would start worshiping a golden cow well <laughs> no, this is exactly what crypto land is they don't really care about the cryptography or the math or anything that makes cryptocurrency kind of interesting they just like the money the, the coins and the money and they they just want to make a whole land where people pretend to be like super rich and wealthy um, let's see. So, all right. So they go to a restaurant. We're going to skip ahead. They go to a restaurant. And now here's a creepy part that comes up. There's a, there's a romance subplot to this whole video, which is so creepy. We'll get into that in a little bit, but here we go. Classic. Thanks. Enjoy your meal. I think I went too far ahead. Lightning network juice. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 please go ahead. I, uh, I'm not a fan of force, you know? Oh, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Classic. So, like, look at her model. Like, it, she, she looks kind of like, like the the young woman from, or the the girl actually. The she's like only like fourteen or fifteen years old from The Last of Us. And like, I mean, she's basically like a child. Uh, <laughs> and he's like hitting on her. It's it's really weird. Uh, major, major, major missed opportunity here missed opportunity how so yeah uh, instead of this animated bratz doll he could have had a romance with uh the connie the anthropomorphic bitcoin that would have actually been interesting but they decided not to do that they decided to go with with underage uh, person here <laughs> guy giving creepy advances to an underage woman all right let's continue see you around <sighs> While you were too busy doing your impressive wordplay, I went ahead and ordered for you. 
a 10k pizza and a bubbly mutant serum board. Okay, so bon appetit. So here's where it's gonna get kind of interesting. Um, no, County, I think I'm falling in love with this place. There's a musical it, number. We are in crypto beat. No one and lock my mind, box friends, but enough bucks when it's gonna the proof of work gym. You can work out and the ladies pass out. Look, the says, not you mind, not things to bit me, sweet friend of mine. But all of everything is pretending if you want to have the anything you will need to combine. Body and mind, you got the keys of my wallet. Where I hold crypto land token. Cause this place is blocked and I get familiarized. They do the Macarena. <laughs> okay, so now they're gonna race like different currencies. Let's skip ahead. Yeah, so that was Prince Ali, but about crypto. <laughs> so it's like Prince Scammy, I guess. <laughs> um, and then there's this, this great scene here where all they do is they just have like the, the, they talk to each other. Like, I don't even know why they even bother animating this. It, it's so weird. It is so weird. <sighs> I'm exhausted. Here's Crypto Bird. I'm still amazed by the success of the Cryptolanders NFT collection. What a great idea. It's the visionary community of Cryptolanders that supported it. Those are the real OGs. They quickly understood how powerful creating a physical representation of the metaverse would be. But in retrospect, it was inevitable. Is that you finally? Oh yeah, so here's the best part. So this whole thing, as, as I mentioned, is it just looks like a scam. Yeah, you know, they're they're selling land that they don't own, et cetera, et cetera. And then they decided to go all in and they do this. They built the pyramid? So they decided to build a pyramid that is a representation of all the crypto scams out there. And they're like gonna walk in and have a great time talking about all the scams people have. And, and, and outside they have the guy who did the, the Pit Connect scam. Yes. <laughs> That's what I thought that the, the, the gold statue was, wow. Which scam was that? A uh, Bit Connect. Oh, the guy, the guy that was like screaming Bitcoin on the stage. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they have a, a pyramid to represent pyramid schemes. You know, they have Connie the coin. Like, mm -hmm. they, I think that they think they can deflect criticism by being sort of ironic about it, but it's not working. <laughs> I was sort of boggled by they're going to make a physical representation of the metaverse. Yeah, there's so much philosophical stuff to unwind there, right? Because the metaverse is a is a digital representation of the real world. I know. So they want to they want to make a real world representation of the digital world that represents the physical world. <laughs> I thought this was all a parody, like South Park or something. I, it, this is like either this is the greatest parody of all time. Apparently, it's not. Like I've done my research. This is not a parody, as far as I can tell. This is a promo. This is this is an actual promo they put out to get people to get interested in crypto land. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it's, it's just, you could not do better satire if you tried, this is amazing. And so by the way, so they have inside the pyramid, they have gambling machines. Gambling is illegal in Fiji, which is where they want to build the island. So I don't know how they, how they think they're getting around that. They clearly did not do their, their, uh, legal research. Um, and, uh, they go and play this pinball game where they have the likeness of the guy who ran, uh, BitConnect. And so there's a big issue with this. Once again, I don't think they did any legal research because you cannot put somebody's likeness on like a pinball machine and sell it without their permission. Um, that's like, you know, you can't make like a, I can't make a Britney Spears pinball machine and sell it, right? You need Britney Spears' 
permission, but they, they don't seem to care. And um, so they play this. The world is not anymore yeah. like it used to be. No, no, no. <clears throat> like I said, it's all just memes. I think it's hilarious. Oh, all these details. Create an account. Deposit your money. Lock it up. Become rich. Involve family and friends. Check your balance. <laughs> So anyway, they, they go and play these games, but what's really interesting is they switch to a uh, live camera. So apparently they actually made this pinball game. <laughs> so yeah, they apparently made that entire pinball game and they're gonna put it in, they, want to, they wanted to put it at, in crypto land. Um, and then the, the, the entire thing finally ends with, once again, the creepy sub romance plot with the guy and the, the young girl. Um, so this uh, bird steals this young girl's crypto wallet. Um, wallet! Are you okay? Yes, but he got my wallet. Mm, no, not. I'm gonna get him. And so, hey, like, that's kind of weird and creepy already, right? 20%? Or more. Let's take profits, baby. Before you go on free fall. <laughs> Oh no, he's flying away. And of course they rip off the Superman theme. Like so many big old problems with this. Oh my God, thank you. By the way, I'm Bianca. Christopher, nice to meet you again. Um, would you like to go for a walk? Actually, I was thinking about taking a crypto kitty. Would you mind sharing? I would love to. Looks like he found his plus one. Huh. Vladimir Club's party is about to start. As promised, we Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end it there. So but the important thing to remember, and I'm gonna talk about this in the next when I get to my, my turn again. But one of the things they're selling here on this island, essentially, because remember, this is a promo video, they're gonna tell you what's on this island. And what they're sort of suggesting in with the romance subplot is that there will be romance and a little bit of um Hanky panky on this island, uh, which is a huge problem, uh, which we'll, we'll get into a bit. But anyway, I just need to show everyone this, this terrible video. It is everything wrong with cryptocurrency and the cryptocurrency culture all wrapped up into a single promo video. So now, now you've all been subjected to, to this terribleness. So you, so you have a persistent bad attitude. I do have a bad attitude about crypto land. I don't, yep. you know, imagine that. <laughs> I, I know, I know. There's, just, well, we'll hear more about it. It's a pretty awesome video though. Oh, well, they, they stole a bunch of assets, which is why it looks even somewhat decent. Uh, although I think most 3D animators would say it's pretty terrible. Well, Alan's got uh, these guys that hacked the 49ers. Yeah, there's a new, threat actor on the scene, a new ransomware threat actor. It's called Blackbyte. And uh, they've hacked some companies. They've hacked some governments, uh, U.S. government offices. No big deal. However, they've also hacked the San Francisco 49ers football team. And that, of course, should strike fear into every red-blooded American's heart. Um, the only problem is they didn't seem to go about it the right way. Um, they... Uh, hit the wrong team, first of all, because the 49ers almost made it to the Super Bowl, but didn't. And um, they seem to have compromised simply a bunch of business assets. But the real gold mine in a football team is the, the uh, playbook. So all the different design plays that a football team has, that's the most one of the most valuable assets any team has. If the competitive, their, their opponents know uh, the structure of their plays, then uh, their opponents can anticipate everything they do on the field and would, of course, lead to their losing the game. And so Black Bite really clearly does not understand American culture and uh, the game of football in particular. Otherwise, they would have done this the right way. Truly a massive lost opportunity. The Black Bite is Russian, I assume? Don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, there, there have been a few reports. Red Canary put out a, an extended blog posting on Blackbyte. In the past, at least, they've relied on, um, on using the, uh, 
uh, what's it called? Uh, the big, uh, oh, well, it's not coming to me. I've forgotten already. They're not particularly innovative or um, revolutionary in their approach. They're simply exploiting proxy shell. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Well, I, I've got the uh, this letter. This I th thought was pretty amazing. When when Trump first got in, I was talking to one of my uh, students who was a Trump supporter, and they said they're trying to punish him for this collaboration with Russia, and that sounds really bogus, and it's not going to work. I agree with Nancy Pelosi. But his financial crimes are monstrous and easily proven. And now his accountant has announced that they are not responsible for any of the reports they made or tax returns for the last 10 years because they were all based on lies, which is what his attorney, Michael Cohen, exposed. And uh, after you publish a letter like that, it's going to be almost impossible for him to get more loans. And he's totally in debt. He lives entirely by getting loans and not paying them back. So this might actually hurt him. Um, I don't imagine anybody will go to prison for it, but it might uh, mess up his finances. Anyway, it's a pretty significant blow to Trump. And this, by the way, is what Mitch McConnell said. Mitch McConnell said, you cannot prosecute a sitting president for financial crimes because they do not rise to the level of high crime and misdemeanor. I mean, that was then after the Chan Chix, he said, you know, pretty soon he won't be in office anymore. And then you can prosecute him like a normal citizen for some of his crimes. And that's what's happening to some extent. So it's possible that Trump's legal troubles might actually rise to the level of inhibiting his presidential campaign, which I would sure be glad to see. Anyway, um, and Elizabeth has got drones with death rays. Yes, drones with death rays. Perfect. <laughs> I know, I mean, it's pretty wild. So, and it's uh, a local California company that's making these. So um, <laughs> the, uh, the problem that they were trying to solve for is uh, how, you know, our military has got drones, but so do our, uh, so do our opponents. So how do you um, take down the enemy drones? Well, they've come up with a way. So um, previously they thought, okay, we could use directed microwave energy to take them out, but um, the, the conventional microwave weapons are a little too bulky for the battlefield um, and aren't particularly precise. So they have uh, <clears throat> come up with an idea to make these drones that uh, have uh, tar targeted um, tiny uh, microwave weapons aboard them so that they can uh, attack the enemy drones and take them out with their own uh, microwave drones. Pretty crazy. What's wrong with just shooting them down with a machine gun? Um, well, you know, I suppose that in some cases that can be difficult. Maybe they're hard to see or inaccessible, or maybe, uh, you know, I could also see a situation where you've got armed drones and you don't really want to expose your human, uh, combatants to these armed drones because they'll just get murdered. So I, I guess, well, I, I was going to say one of the things that you don't want to do when you are firing weapons is just to sort of fire them into the air where the bullets yeah, then yeah. gain a bunch of kinetic energy, going, uh, potential energy going up and then regain that energy going back down and then rain mm -hmm. upon poor human civilians uh, back on earth. Um, yeah. You can get seriously, seriously hurt by doing that. That's another great point. We've been shooting down airplanes for a long time and nobody worries about trivial little problems like that. Uh, usually, well, yeah, I mean, I suppose. Yeah, I mean... What I wondered about this is that uh, I wondered how, you know, basically how you would do this without taking out everything else. Cause I mean, isn't this, isn't this similar to, I, I would think this would be similar to just letting off a giant EMP, uh, but apparently not since they are saying that it's, it's highly targeted. Right. Yes. Right, so so you you can make it so that it's essentially sort of like a laser, um, you know, sort of a high gain, especially the way that a lot of the the high uh, energy microwaves are generated within a um, uh, it's not a ma mag uh, magnetron. That's uh, that's the impression that this article yeah. gives that it's going to be like that. 
Yeah. So you know, like when a magnetron creates microwaves in, in your microwave, it doesn't go out the back. It only goes out the front, yeah. you know, into the cavity. And you can sort of do the same thing um, with even better mag uh, magnetrons. Um, so what you've got is a large blast radius, like a shotgun or flamethrower. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, we're back to you, Caitlin. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to crypto land. Um, so we have an article. And this is some good news. I have some good news about crypto land. Um, let's see. Share. Share my screen. Share. All right. So it turns out uh, that The Guardian has an article. Let's see. Written by The Guardian. I don't see a name on the article. Uh, it's always a good sign. It's always a good sign. It's The Guardian. So I know it's a real article. Uh, does not have a name attached. That's interesting. Anyway, uh, so The Guardian has an article talking about how the crypto land uh, was going to buy this island. And the island that crypto land was going to be on was actually in, in Fiji. And unfortunately, it has, well, I should say, fortunately, it has fallen through. <laughs> so they can no longer buy the island. Some people have actually been foolish enough to, to buy crypto land NFTs. And they have bought their parcels of land on this island that they can no longer buy that is no longer on the market for crypto land and so i don't know how they're going to refund the money or if they're going to refund the money but it's over they're not getting this island um so let me tell you why this island was bad to begin with uh first of all the whole kind of idea behind crypto land is that it feeds into the libertarian mindset mindset of seasteading so seasteading is the idea where you create your own nation on the sea that's not subject to laws and regulations uh, that you find in most other countries. Uh, and libertarians love this idea. They can just go out there and have, you know, no laws that they don't like, you know, no taxes, et cetera. Except if we look at the island, and I have it here on Google Earth, it is, so the, the, the island they want to buy was uh, Nananu Ikake. Uh, which is just so here's Fiji, here's none of, here's the island right here um, in the center. Uh, it is you could swim from Fiji to this island. So any uh, laws in Fiji are going to apply to this island. So remember how I said that like the the slot machines and the gambling were illegal. That's in Fiji um, where they want to build it. That's because you know there's no way they can get away from Fijian law because here's Fiji and then the island of course is right up here. Now, the other big thing about crypto land is that they were billing it as the destination for crypto enthusiasts. So you know how every year we go to Las Vegas for DEF CON. They wanted this island to be the same sort of thing for, for cryptocurrency. The only problem is that Las Vegas is a good choice because it's a hub for international travel, right? There's an airport nearby. Everyone can get to it from any different country. Las Vegas is a, that makes Las Vegas actually a pretty good place for people to come. Now, the closest international airport to this island is on the other side of Fiji, uh, over here. Um, I think it's in Nadi. Oh yeah, there it is. You can actually see it from here. So this is the international airport. It's not that big for an international airport. This is how you would get in and you would have to go all the way across the island. This is a two and a half hour drive uh, to get over to, and then you'd have to take a boat um, from over here, from I guess this dock, uh, you'd have to take a boat over to this island. So it just fails on so many levels. Uh, it's absolutely terrible. Not only that, uh, Alan, I think once mentioned this idea that libertarians are a lot like cats, like they're fiercely independent and oblivious to the fact that they're completely dependent on their owners. Uh, um, you know, there's no power to this island. Uh, there's no police. Uh, that can get to this island really easily. No firefighters, nothing. Uh, there's, they would have to set their own infrastructure. And I don't think they realize just how expensive all that is, um, especially because you're getting the idea that they don't want to pay taxes. And so they're going to buy this island in Fiji where it's just going to be all cryptocurrency and no taxes and all this stuff. Uh, but yeah, there's no power, no infrastructure. Uh, as far as I can tell, like currently no internet, though, you know, obviously Starlink and stuff could fix that pretty, pretty easily. But it's, yeah, it's just a, an island off the, off the coast of Fiji, uh, subject to Fijian law. Um, and the thing is, is like, they're basically talking about colonizing uh, part of Fiji. So, you know, Fiji has a, has a history and they have a, a native population. Um, and if you look at the video, it's all like white people. <laughs> 
invading this island and colonizing it and turning it into like this rich paradise um, where, you know, most of Fiji is, you know, just farmers and scientists and that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, it's not, it, it, it's kind of crass if, if you think about it, so. Is there somebody already living on the island? I don't think so. I, I did notice there are like a few buildings here and there, but it's pretty sparse. There's like well, a building here. There's at least that. Okay. Yeah, there, there's a dock over here. You can dock and there's obviously some paths, uh, but it's, it's mostly, I mean, and the thing is like, I don't know how this island would withstand something like a typhoon or a tsunami, which of course happens when you're in the middle of the Pacific. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they really want to build crypto land in Fiji, I would have highly recommended like building it one closer to the international airport. Uh, and there actually are some resorts and stuff near the international airport. Um, like just build it like over here, like maybe buy some farmland, build it over here. Um, but you know, that doesn't feed into the whole dream of the libertarian. We're going to not have your, your rules. It's going to be completely deregulated cryptocurrency for life, you know, type of thing. So, yeah, yep. you're making it sound like, like, uh, utopia is hard to achieve. It, you would think so. Well, Alan has got the end of the world here with the drought. Yeah. If we don't end because of NFTs and crypto land, then at least, the climate will kill us all. Uh, apparently, according to a newly released study, the past 22 uh, years from 2000 to 2021 have been the driest in the past 1200 years, going back to the year 800. The study authors looked at growth patterns in rings of trees that go back over a thousand years. And apparently you can infer the amount of soil moisture uh, based on how vigorously a tree grows. And you can guess how vigorously a tree is growing based on how widely spaced the annual rings are in its trunk. Anyway, um, it's very clear based on this that we are in the driest 22 year period since the year 800. And that's not probably a very good thing. I mean, make of that what you will, but this is pretty good science here. This is well established, uh, a well established methodology for measuring soil moisture. And uh, what the what the authors say is that um, uh, first of all, of course, we've seen a lot less rainfall. But what's really driving driving this lower soil moisture is the increase in temperatures specifically. So it's not simply that we're getting less rain, it's that because of the higher heat, what rain does fall uh, does not get absorbed into the soil very readily because it just evaporates off more quickly. Yeah, yeah, not good. I heard, I heard they're planning to just recycle all the water in Los Angeles is their cure for this. Oh, is that the plan there now? That's the plan I hear, which is the only thing they can do really. Wow. Yeah, I, uh, I understand that uh, El Paso, Texas right now has the world's largest desalinization plant. Um, yeah. Even though they're quite far from the oceans, they need to recycle all of their wastewater and make it drinkable again. So I hope people in LA enjoyed drinking their sewage. Well, they, they talked a lot about how it's going to be super pure, more pure than distilled water. Nothing could go wrong, right? Well, I mean, you make it sound like we don't do the same thing over here. I mean, everyone does it. We all drink our own water that we poop in. I mean, it's, it's, we don't like to think about it, but it's a, it's a common practice. Well, you know, some people are embracing drinking their own urine. So what's That's the difference right. really? Uh, th there's a big difference. Uh, <laughs> actually. <laughs> well, Ellen, I think we got a little level trouble. Why don't you turn yourself down a bit now? We we're having trouble getting the levels balanced today. Oh, anyway. okay. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Caitlin was loud. Now she's not quite as loud. Such is life. Anyway, we're back to uh, me with um, Trudeau. You know, they're having this big trucker thing in Canada, which apparently is now resolved, where they block an important bridge with a small number of truckers um, protesting vaccine mandates by blocking up with all the traffic in the city. And it really bothered the Canadians. And so they have passed a law that they are going to require, and it was funded by donations from America and, and to some extent from Canada. 
And so the first went to normal crowdfunding platform, but they blocked them saying, we're not going to support an illegal activity. So they went to cryptocurrency. And so now they passed a emergency law demanding that everybody can summarily block funds transfers to an illegal activity, even cryptocurrency. So I don't know how they expect to enforce that or even implement it technically, but that is where they're at. Um, they, it's the first example I know of someone demanding the ability to block cryptocurrency transfers. Um, so we'll see what comes of that. I think someone is going to technically explain to him that you can't stop cryptocurrency transfers, but uh, they're going to try in Canada. Anyway, then we got Liz with uh, the power company. Yes. So uh, this this story just, you know, spoke to all of my own personal fantasies because I'm busy getting ripped off uh, Six Ways to Sunday by PG&E in just heinous, horrible and awful ways. Uh, but uh, but did some um, did some folks in the UK think that their fantasies had come true because they uh, there was a, a nasty storm um that hit the northeast part of england and uh you know that's kind of, this is kind of a crazy concept uh when the power fails over there and people are without power they actually get compensated for it by the by the utility they actually get checks when the power's out what a concept we used to get those here occasionally when if the power would go out, it would destroy everything in your freezer and your refrigerator. You could submit a claim and they would pay you back for that. But they've done away with all of that uh, because right now it's it's how can we gouge our customers and taxpayers for the maximum amount of money. However, um, in in the UK, they still, the utilities still pay uh, out um, compensation to customers and uh, sometimes they pay a little bit more <laughs> than intended uh, because some, some people got checks for like $3 trillion <laughs> from the utility company and uh, um, the tweet from the guy, one of the people that got one was like, thank you, but are, are you sure that you can afford this? Because uh, this is a whole lot of money. Yeah. Um, something like 2.3 trillion uh, uh, British pounds. And so uh, apparently, apparently there was a mistake here. Uh, and they, they sent out these insane payments to uh, a handful of, of customers. Um, it sounds like the so, British, British equivalent of our PPP then. Right, except for, uh, I, I thought it was funny, the article made the point that, the, um, <laughs> that, that this payment was uh, more than the, uh, the GDP of the entire UK. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, yeah. pretty good though, pretty good. All right, and Caitlin has, amazingly enough, more about Cryptoland. Yes, more crypto land, more crypto land. Oh, this place is the, the terrible nightmare that keeps on giving. Uh, so we have uh, our final article about crypto land, uh, talking about everything more that's wrong with crypto land. Now, now I showed you the video, I showed you how this is not gonna work. What could possibly be worse? Well, oh my gosh, <laughs> there's a lot. So thirdworldgamer.com has an article written by Travis Anderson talking about how crypto land is a PR nightmare. We start off with their pro pedophilia um, sentiments on Twitter. So this person on Twitter asked crypto, I can remember this is all libertarian dream about seasteading, uh, what they think that they'll make up their own laws. What will be the age of consent on crypto land? Asked a little head ass on eBay. And crypto land replies in the worst possible way, of course, mental maturity should be more than enough winky face. Like, and we saw in the video that the whole, one of the things they were selling was like romance and, and you know, doing the, the adult hokey pokey. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, oh my God, no, 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 no. Uh, and it, it just, get, it, it, I, I'm not gonna say it gets worse from there because that's pretty much the, the, the worst thing that they could possibly do. 
but it's there's some other bad things too. Like for example, you might not believe this, but there's been some criticism about crypto land, and uh, they've sent their legal department out to silence the critics. Uh, so lots of takedown notices, lots of legal threats of legal action going out. And the video that they made, they used assets that they did not have rights to use. So one of one of the member there was the little seagull that would like steal the crypto wallet. Well, that was actually a free model uh, put out for animators to use for nonprofit purposes. And they just stole it and used it in a for project, for profit project and didn't credit the animator, uh, which is something they have to do. And so when the animator complained, uh, of course they blocked the animator and sent legal threats to the animator who originally created the rig for the, for the seagull. Um, and they, they tried to apologize, but it's, it's bad. Um, they, yeah, they, they don't, they put out a really bad apology. They said, oh, well, you know, there's some non-English speaking, um, you know, people working on our Twitter. Um, and this article doesn't mention it, but for example, they have on their main website, let's see if we can't find it on Google. Um, so I didn't think about this earlier. Uh, Cryptoland website. Can't get there. Ah, here it is. So this is their their main website. Like like I said, this is not a joke. They are really trying to do this, um, and apparently it won't. Oh, there we go. Okay, so they have a list of people working on it. Apparently somewhere I don't see it. Um, no. Well, they they did have a list of people working on the project, but if you go onto like their LinkedIn, you'll find most of the people working on the project don't actually work on the project. Uh, the thing is a total scam. Um, one person reached out to one of the people listed on their website for working on crypto, crypto land and asked, you know, what's your deal with this? And they're like, I don't work on crypto land. I was like, <laughs> this is like, an old scam. They just put a bunch of celebrities on the list that are, have got, that are really not involved. Exactly. So. Caitlin, you act like this is a bad thing. I mean, I think what we're failing to consider here is how awesome it could be if we ship off all of the most insufferable crypto bros to a remote island and then they just stay there. That sounds like it would improve life in the Bay Area uh, significantly. Yeah, yeah. And not only that, um, Fiji is very near Tonga, uh, <laughs> where the active volcano region is at the moment. Uh, so. Well, that's Why just, don't we throw save a step and just send them straight into the volcano? We can tell them there's like unlimited gains in there or something. Yes, yes, we can sacrifice all the virgins. Well, I'll have you know this is already happening. They're all going to Puerto Rico or um, El Salvador. Right, right. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, it's it's crumbling. It's failing. It gets even worse. Well, good. Anyway, that's Cryptoland, everyone. I just wanted to share this deep dive. <laughs> so, so, you know, we need like a promotional link where people can buy into Cryptoland and we get a percentage. We're missing that part. We're well, just not business. I know, we're not in on the grift. How, how can we not be on the grift? We're like, we're like amateurs. Yeah. All right. And, and anyway, Alan has got surveillance in Cambodia. Yes. And first of all, can you hear me better this time? Yeah, it sounds yes. pretty good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yes, um, Cambodia... Uh, is about to roll out what they're calling a national internet gateway, which is designed to function very much like the so-called Great Firewall of China, in which the government is forcing ISPs to um, monitor all traffic through this gateway. And the government will presumably use this to stifle any kind of dissent or any kind of free speech. Uh, the government, of course, is headed by President Hun Sen, who's been in office since 1985 and doesn't show any uh, interest in leaving. And it's effectively a one-party state run by the military. So um, it appears that unlike many of its neighbors, or excuse me, I should say some of its neighbors, Cambodia is really um, becoming more authoritarian. And uh, so, it's a, another example of a, a country emulating China's model. Um, although I don't know where the technology is being sourced from, it wouldn't be a stretch to imagine that Cambodia is getting a lot of technical assistance from China, since China has long been a patron of the Cambodian government. Uh, 
-hmm. However, uh, as of earlier today, the government has announced that the National Internet Gateway is on hold temporarily due to the COVID pandemic, which doesn't make a lot of sense. No. <laughs> there must be some kind of either technical holdup or possibly diplomatic holdup that um, is complicating the rollout plan. However, I would not expect this um, to last very long. It seems like they have every intention and every incentive to um, implementing this internet gateway. Yeah, I'm surprised more countries haven't done it. I mean, China is very dominant and a lot of people are pretty much uh, following the Chinese model. Yeah, and there are plenty of authoritarian governments around the world that probably have the money to pay for such technology. Um, they're China already paying for the NSO group surveillance yeah, technology, so why them... not a gateway too? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, well, uh, that's it for this one. It'll be in Tuesday, we'll be back on Friday.